right, it's time. Uh, this is it. This is uh, Smash Center 39. Yours truly, Swire from PG Stats, Panda Global. Uh, wow, we we are here. It's it's now the last day of September, September 30th. Tomorrow's October, which means Happy Halloween. And uh, we got quite the show lined up for you. We got a couple updates over the weekend. There were some great tournaments that happened, some C tiers followed by an A tier. Then we're gonna get just into Summit. There's so much to talk about. Um, some of it more exciting than the others. Uh, some of it with more legs than others, which you'll see in a second. But in any case, if this is your first time joining Smash Center, this is the live showing on Twitch. Uh, you're gonna see at the very end, we have a live Q and A where you get to shoot questions at us. We get to shoot answers at you. And then we get to laugh and cry. If you're watching us on YouTube though, make sure you subscribe and like the channel so you can get the latest updates in Smash tournament coverage, news, and uh, controversy updates. Since, like we've said every show, there seems to be one pretty much on American Smash Twitter every other day, if not every day. Um, but jokes aside, welcome to the show. We're going to bring Kony in now. Um, he's going to join us as we review some of these tournaments and uh, hopefully he can give us some <laughs> his opinions on them, especially since we have one that occurred abroad. Uh, in his favorite region of Japan. So, Kony's joining us now on the call. He is the lovely MDVA uh, host with the most. Uh, Kony, what's up, man? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, I'm chilling. This event was pretty quiet. I think a lot of people were at TwitchCon, everybody that, you know, would mm -hmm. go to stuff like this. So, no huge events, a couple C tiers, I think, and then, you know, obviously the event that we're about to talk about. But pretty sleepy weekend for Smash, but it's kind of the calm before the storm because coming up, um, the big got, house. Yeah, you got big house. You got Thunder, which obviously isn't That's... looking huge in terms of attendance, but I mean, a lot of money on the line and a lot of players represented. And then you've also got um, Summit in just a couple weeks, so October is going to be a big month. Yeah, October Fest without the October Fest. Um, Tony's absolutely right. This past weekend was pretty chill. Um, TwitchCon was in full effect, uh, which for many people in Smash actually meant not a lot. Um, not trying to shade, but it, you know, it's uh, TwitchCon's an event. Uh, I don't really know what else to say. Kony, you didn't go to TwitchCon. No. Um, you're partnered on Twitch. It's it's a it's a thing. Um, we've seen pictures. We've seen videos. Check it out if you ever get the chance. But it's a con, so a lot of people, a lot of waiting. And a lot of inaccessibility if you're not part of the group. Um, sort of like PAX. Um, but yeah, let's just jump into the weekend. We have the weekend update for you now. A um, couple seats here I wanted to comment with Kony on. And then we're going to uh, go a little bit over Umabora SP4. Sorry, SP5. Um, before we actually get into the Summit update. So this past weekend, a um, lot to actually look at. And um, one of the biggest tournaments that were happening uh, in and around the region is uh, we got Rev Major. So Rev Major 2019 actually comes to us from the Philippines. It was a C tier. JJ Rockets actually took it. Don't know how that happened in terms of like why he was there, but he was. JJ Rockets actually a popular Smash for Diddy main. And now, not sure if he's still maining Diddy, but I have seen him post clips. Um, JJ Rockets also trivia, I think, I believe, had the most attended events of any kind, um, sort of like Me Too King esque back when yeah. Smash Four was really big. Uh, pretty great mid level player somehow was just at everything. So props to him. That's Rev Major 2019. We also had Super Smashed Fest, which uh, a little bit of a story behind this one. But Mutes, uh, Peach from Florida, actually apparently took a flight directly into bracket and then won. So wow, Mutes, that's that's a lot. A dream. I know that's that's just. I wish I could just come into work and just be at the top as soon as I get in, but uh, alas, my work does not feature a bracket in Smash. So uh, congrats to Mutes. We had players like Best Ness, Larry Lur also there. Larry, of course, climbing his way back out of area fifty-two thousand into the PGR top fifty. Maybe we'll see him later this week. Um, definitely gonna be at Big House. I'm hoping. Um, and a lot of other players like Prodigy were also there. So congrats to Mute. So it's a quick C tier win to pocket and run away with. We also had Ascension 9. That's IX in Roman numerals. Uh, Eon actually took that event. The story behind that one was Eon, uh, SoCal Fox. Correct me if I'm wrong if he's not. NorCal, SenCal, sorry. Um, but Eon was a very popular Smash 4 Fox main as well. Right now, I don't even think he plays Fox. Um, could be a combination of Joker, unsure. Um, but Schroeder was also there, Strokazi, aka, 
uh, usually the person to take these ascensions. So it looks like Eon learned a thing or two. Um, but yeah, that was a C tier win for him. Congrats uh, for everybody else that was there. Names that I'm not really familiar with, but we do have players like Thor, Silver, Base Mage, actually, who I think opted for Summit. My yep. Okay, so Base Mage, that's where that comes from. Um, and yeah, so another C tier win. We're sort of blasting through these because they are as notable as just one set count or not. Um, when it comes to like PGR releasing, like that's kind of how you're going to hear like Eon took what two sets over Schroeder. That was that was it. So uh, C tiers pretty much make the difference between placements like very minimally, very decimally. But then now the A tier. So Umabora SP5 and Kony's favorite region, Japan, featuring a top eight of Shutone at first, Zachary at second, Choco at third, actually. Yeah. Um, very cool to see him actually. Um, trivia for Choco in Smash 4, he was one of the only, if not the only, uh, PGR player to make the PGR without coming to the United States. There was a season where he scored in the high 30s or 40s, but yeah, he was just wrecking in Japan. So Choco actually doing it, I think, with ZSS once again, Mr. R commenting on the fact that um, there's a lot of strong ZSSs in Japan. Uh, yeah. Doesn't surprise me that Choco's there at the top. Then Kirihara a fourth. Kirihara frustratingly on the rankings or not, based on whether or not he attends. Arguably for many people who have played him, including players like Zero. Um, top 10 player in the world, they argue, but also activity, a little lackluster. Um, whether it's for work, whether it's for anything else, uh, Kirihara came here and won, uh, if people remember, what was it called? Frame Perfect Series 2. Um, I think it was presented by MVG, or it was just what it was. Kirihara won that over, I believe, Zero. Um, and that was insane to like win a tournament over Zero back in the day. So... Kierhara took it fourth, and Proto Banham with Lucina, the Crisp uh, Warrior at fifth, and then Kamame at fifth. Kamame just now standard consistency man. Wow. Um, and then a new name that I keep seeing every now and then, and more consistently, at least for the Villagers in Japan altogether, is kept at seven, tying with Dio. So JoJo references that I won't understand. <laughs> um, but yeah, what do, what do you think, Kony, about this top base? Pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty all over the place. Good to see the familiar names like Choco. Good to see Kameme um, continually proving how good he is because for a long time, everybody knew he was good, but he wasn't really showing it. Um, seeing him just sort of back in consistent form is is impressive stuff. Um, always like seeing Kep's name up there too. Kept uh, came to SmashCon, had a really good run. I can't remember where he stopped, but had a had a very surprising run, especially since... Villager is on pretty much nobody's radar. Um, Low key, very the lowest of keys right now. Probably, like he's one of the characters that I think people consistently forget is in the game. Top villager representation is what there's like Bobby Wasabi, um, Panda Bear in the Midwest. Like there, there's nothing. I, I think if um, anything, people think more about Isabel just because you know recent news or just seeing like the yeah. infinite like. Um, if anything, out of the two from the franchise. But even, so people, I think, acknowledge that Isabel is actually worse. Sure, so, like, sure. I think it's just she is the meme factor, and then just by luck of the draw has some um, controversial figures uh, maining her, say. But uh, yeah, Villager, I think, is a character that sort of is so wonky that he can struggle to play the same game as other characters, but it's good to see somebody making it work. Yeah, and nobody really, like, um, no one thinks in bracket, oh my gosh, there's a villager in my bath, what am I going to do, you know? Mm. Um, not that much notoriety kept, though, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't want to, like, a lot of people ask, like, oh, like, is, I mean, think about Leon, right? Leon's stock, um, if we're mm. talking about characters that are not super represented, but, like, um, make it and get great wins, I mean, Leon, most notably at Defendant North. You sure. know, 2019 took a bunch of names. Bowser, of course, he got that famous uh, Cosmos set. But since then, not a lot of Leon news, but I know he's competing. Uh, yeah. now, now it's like kept, kept, kept when it comes to like maybe characters that aren't seen. But yeah. I think at this pace, looking nice, looking crispy, potentially getting a villager on the PGR. I don't know. But um, in any case, uh, tremendous accomplishments. Dio, I've also seen names um, for as well. 
Uh, something to note, though, is that at Umabor SP5, T placed ninth, um, along with Komei. So those are two names who have been in those graphics. I uh, actually got caught up in something this weekend and could not make the graphic for Umabor SP5, so expect that later this week. Sorry, everybody. But um, other names that are familiar for people, Nia Tono at 13th, Sue at 13th, Leia at 13th, and then in the 17th range, we actually had Raito, Umeki, Gact, Abadongo, and Ken. Uh, not to mention Rain, who's like that ever-present force who people yeah. forget about, but he's like a cool tag to say and also a cool player to see. So um, congrats to everybody there. Um, I do want to comment that it is cool to see that Japan has now another A tier under their belt. Um, later, probably people will complain because uh, mm -hmm. I think the United States isn't lacking in A tiers at all. It's pretty S tier heavy, actually. Um, but we're seeing more and more regions have those tournaments that quote unquote matter. Those tournaments that like, if you miss as a top player, like those are people getting points or not. And another one I want to point out, which is actually happening this weekend. Wow. It is this weekend. Uh, ultimate fighting arena 2019 happening in grand Paris, France, um, or grand Paris. And, uh, that's also an eight tier as well. They have 488 people. They get the international multiplier. Europe's going to be hype. And notably, MKLeo is going to be there with Kamame, and I believe, who was it? I forgot. It was um, it was four PGR players, and we were working with the organizers to coordinate the announcement, and they they totally nailed it. So MKLeo, Glutoni, Kamame, Mr. R will be there, um, and that's this weekend, actually. That's why they won't be at Big House. So big yeah. news, big surprises. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, that's Umabar SP5. Any final words, Kony, before we start the... Uh, I don't even know what to call it, but the summit update, what we're going to get into tonight, the main topic. Yeah, whatever it is, uh, the summit rundown. No, I mean, um, I, I think the most important takeaway is kind of what you said about other areas and other regions having events that are meeting that status, A tier, C tier, B tier. That's what those events need to really um, have that level of representation on the PGR, having the multinational bonus. And I wonder if it means that the events... Like I, I assume that Leo was sort of brought out there, and it kind of sucks that it feels like you might need to do that, like invite him out to your event and fly him out. But I guess a lot of tournaments are doing that anyway. It just sucks because he's crossing the Atlantic Ocean. But I am very happy to see other areas of the world getting that level of shine um, that's typically reserved just for North America. It's good to see. Hopefully that momentum can continue. I don't know if that's just a larger number of entrants overall, um, but it is indicative of just kind of a healthy worldwide scene. It's good to yeah. see. Yeah, and specifically United States, not the shade, but it is specifically United States. It doesn't exactly get spread to Canada or Mexico. We've seen that in um, Gommel. We've seen that in the Smash Factors. Like, they get the hype, they get the players, but they don't get um, people coming here like Japan does, where they're supposed B tiers, which are like, nearly amazing here um frequent you know like uh smash cons and the evos uh things like that genesis they get like a huge group and people also assume they all know each other and they're like it's like someone from south carolina knowing someone from north dakota like you could not be farther um but something to know on the tournament tier system which is listed on the pg stats bio uh ultimate fighting arena 2019 there's two ways to reach a tier there's the pgr way right or the entrant way which is general um and ultimate fighting arena actually reached a tier by entrance omobora sp5 reached a tier by pgr players so mm, interesting okay. distinction there um yep. omobora sp5 is worth 1440 ufa is worth 1215 so leo takes it lutoni takes it still rated lower but you know it, it is what it is so something to keep in mind um big house this weekend uh definitely got s tier by pgr um, entrance, we're looking high, but that's going to be a 27.52 compared to main stage, which is 25.12. So a little bit more stacked, more in line with what we think, right, of uh, S tiers when it comes to the legacy events. So the big house, the Genesis, the shines at this point. So that'll be exciting. But now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to jump into the summit update. And Kony, I, I'm not surprised. I'll just say that I'm not surprised. What a day! I'm, what a day so for people who don't know and this is you know this this is history summit is uh put on by beyond the smash 
They put on this whole thing. They invite all these players. You know at this point if you're watching the show. But this is the second one for Ultimate. The first one, which was earlier in the year, featured some melee talent, which it looks like it will again. Um, and, you know, early rising slash really notable Smash Ultimate talent. Um, invitational content, all this stuff. And we're currently in the voting process. And if you're new to that, um, it is a thing. And people get votes by incentives. Esam, I think, streamed wearing a different wig every hour, every 100 votes. Yeah. Um, Arfang, uh, which we'll talk about mostly in this update, uh, who made it, actually, in the last closing round with uh, Big Left, actually, um, had a pretty interesting campaign himself. So in the past, uh, players like Chudat have eaten an onion live, uh, Ice Climbers player from Melee, um, ate an onion live on stream. Other ones, they just do all sorts of goals, and it's kind of funny, kind of uh, concerning, but for the most part, once you're in, you're in, and you don't have to sell yourself again like that. So yeah. uh, who, who's in so far, Coney? Who's, who's still slated? Let, let's talk about that um, before the actual update. Who, who's invited sure. so far? So far, let me bring it up. I got it on the other monitor over here. So uh, obviously, Tweak and Leo got direct invites. Um, Leo getting a, an invite because he's the best in the world, without question. And then uh, tweaking an invite, I think, just sort of as a gesture of goodwill because of everything that happened at the last time. So, got those two. Um, mm -hmm. Qualified players, and these are guys that got here from doing well at previous events. I think six of them got him from main stage. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so all six of these guys from, from main stage. So you've got Mars, Nairo, Light, Void, T, and Mutase. Now, a lot of those names are sort of familiar. Mars, Nairo, Light, Void. Um, those guys are basically top 10. I, I think Void, yeah, Void was 10th on the PGR. No, that was top Light, ten. Void was 9th. That's Not what it was, yeah. I, I, I got Light, Void, and Cosmos mixed up. Because like they're all uh, on that, like, who should be top 10, and Cosmos drew the short stick. Um, Oop. But yeah, so we've got all these top 10 players... And then you've got T and Mutase, and, and T obviously making it from having a, a wild, just sort of runaway bracket um, at main stage, just putting on a, a hell of a performance, beating on Gluttony and so many other players. Mutase having a weird thing where he got super far in the tournament, had to play Salem for the summit spot, actually uh, ended up... To, yeah, Salem just saying he didn't want to play it. Not for any reason, like he was scared or anything, or like he didn't want to go, but he wanted his friend to have the opportunity. Apparently, they're very close. So, Mudace is going to get in. Uh, there are three more spots for qualified players. I believe two are going to be unveiled this weekend at Big House, depending on who does well. Mm -hmm. And then one more at a last chance qualifier. I don't know enough about that, but it's somewhere in the game. Help us out, chat. We know that Big House is definitely the headlining, partnering event, and that's going to be at least two slots, if not all three, but... For the last, quali last chance qualifier event, if you have the link or you just want to let us know, it's kind of hard I to think, find. I think last time it was a 2GG event. Um, is I'm it, that is it Nightmare on Smashville? Is that, that's, isn't that going to be after? Oh my gosh, um, Summit's in like just a few weeks. Oh my gosh. Anyways. Summit's real close. So, um, go on. So that that's the qualified bit, but the... They're that's saying Nightmare on Smashville. They're saying on Nightmare on Smashville. Got it. Okay, wow. Okay. That's cool. Well, so, Cal. So, so that's that. That's the qualified players bit. But the more interesting thing about Summit uh, is the the crowdfunded bit. Now, when it was first conceived, the crowdfunded part was originally designed to be for people who had large fan bases or just kind of crowd favorites, underdogs that never really got that big shine. But they um, people wanted to see them at it. So think of somebody like Axe, who historically had a really hard time. Um, making a super farm bracket, but you always knew he was good enough, and he just needed a little bit more training, a little bit more shine, and you know, think about Axe from a couple years ago, and now think about Axe now. What right? is he, top top five? He's he's insane. Top five, top five. So that's what it was originally supposed to be. What Summit voting has sort of morphed into oh, over God. time is almost like a, a carnival sideshow kind of deal, where you've got people with. You want to get you've into got, that now? Got, you want to get into that now? Well, here's the thing. You've got you've got one you you've got a couple things that can happen. You have entire game fan bases coming together. So Armada and Leffen were both in the running. 
because, you know, they're both good at Ultimate. Don't get me wrong. They're both very good, but clearly they're in there and they're going to get a lot of votes because they're Melee pedigree. So you have all of Melee backing them. Then you have national sort of backing, and you see that with guys like Glutiny, who has the European vote, and obviously Levin Armada. Continental well. backing, actually. Yeah. Continental backing, yes. That's a good way to put that's, that's even bigger. Uh, I know France specifically loves their boy, but that's true. All of Europe comes out for him. So you've got uh, Glutiny there. Then you've got some states are really good at Summit, and I think that's what you saw here. So uh, New England is notoriously good. They're getting their boys into Summit. Um, not this actually, time. Not, well, not this time, but they've gotten uh, Light no, no, before. and Mars yeah, before. before into the Smash 4 boot camp, and obviously they have an appearance at pretty much every uh, Melee Summit. Um, at the Smash 4 boot camp, uh, a Mega Man by the name of Peebnut oh, got boy. in. North Carolina? Because, South Georgia. Carolina. Because okay. of the power of South Carolina. And the guy, he, he's very good, obviously. Very sleeper. Very under the radar. Had a few big wins, but wasn't... He, he, he's he, not a big... He was called a meme pick, which is kind of rude. And it's a service. Yeah, very good at the game. Incredibly good at the game, but is very, you know, sort of... Um, wasn't known, yeah. He was more low-key. So, South Carolina has done it again. Uh, with with somebody who we'll talk about in a second, but you you've got all these different things. You've got the national players, you've got the the fan base players, you've the the so called meme picks. Like Esam was one of them for a melee event because everybody thought me Esam sucked at melee. He actually he, quit melee. Well, by in part related multiple things, yeah. but he mentioned like so the other part of Summit too is like people really people really care. So yeah. he made it into melee, and people were like thinking he was undeserving out of it and oh yep. boy it got it got nasty but anyways continue yeah it got really bad but there are three other uh crowdfunded players that are coming in so spoiling whatever sorry dogs are going crazy uh spoiling what happened earlier uh leffen is in as i think everybody knew he would be <laughs> guy is amazing at melee very good at ultimate has a large fan base um i think i said last week he was one of my number one picks i really wanted him in there mostly because i think he he was very valuable at the first ultimate summit because like you've got four different personalities sitting on the couch and commentating and you don't know what they're going to be like and sometimes it's easy to fall into sort of easy sort of nice jokes you know because like it's easy and it's familiar so you just uh -huh. keep saying the same thing over and over yeah and leffen kind of cuts through that crap which is great i think he's great for that um I gotta confess, I, I, I've heard Arfang, I know the name, I have never spoken with the guy, um, I, I don't know what placement he got to qualify for it, and that's not a shot, I just know that Evo said that if you got top 256 at Evo, you were going to be available to qualify, so I was like, <laughs> holy crap, that opens up, that, that's wide open. So 65th actually at Evo, impressive to say the least. 65th for, at Evo? Okay, not, that's Not the worst, I mean, that's getting some rounds in in Vegas, I mean, geez, that's, that's through the everything right he also had a couple notable results 49th at ceo in 2019 uh it was at the 2gg grand tour where he popped off third out of 207 17th yeah. at smash splash which is an s tier okay this is looking a little bit like a pgr player card in the upper 40s possibly you know i don't know i don't want to say anything all right relax sure. south carolina um, i think he's uh i think he's 25th sort of, at momocon it's kind of interesting because I think he's going to sort of the harken back to the um, the boot camp. He's going to fill that peanut role, and he's from the same region where, like, he'll show up and people, are like, oh, damn, this guy's actually really good. I remember Peabnut having really good sets at a boot camp and taking taking out people who, uh, yeah, otherwise no. they wouldn't think that he could. So They're I think Arfang is going to sort of fulfill that same role, especially with Pichu, who I think is most interesting because that's a character that's sort of fallen off a lot of people's sort of minds as of late. All right, so two things. One, we got South Carolina in the chat, SC gang. We also got Peabnut in the chat, Peabnut gang. Um, but everyone's gangster until they got a Mega Man at the Invitational. <laughs> and uh, similarly with Pichu, like, these are controlled environments. So something that's also funny about Summit is they... First of all, it's not double elimination. So you're not just going to get there. You know, they're right. going to stretch this into a three, almost four. Yeah, it is four days of content. They're not just going to go and have however many sets for double elim and call it a day. So they do a lot around Robin or Swiss or whatever format they choose to do this time. So everybody gets to see everybody at least play three to four times, even if they're losing. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting because Pichu is definitely not a character that you can just like 
I mean, there isn't really any character in Ultimate that you could just like roll your buttons over. Um, like you could as much in Smash Four, you could just steal neutral or invalidate neutral. Sure. Um, so I'm excited to see what Arfang does. Um, but getting into the campaign that Arfang had, uh, mm. can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I don't know enough about it. I was actually super busy this weekend. Um, we, we had a friend's wedding, whitest wedding I've ever been to. Oh my god! Everybody's from Massachusetts with the boat shoes and the multicolored shorts and the it's short sleeve. Very, bro. Button ups. Very white. Very white. Um, so it, it was Mallory's old high school friend. And good god. So oh. anyway, um, I didn't get to catch much of. Uh, Shoutouts to white people. Yeah. <laughs> Rule the world, unfortunately. Stop. Uh, so, <laughs> so, See, so, I can't, you know, you give them an inch, man, and they take them out. So, right, um, on. so uh, <laughs> I, I didn't get to catch a lot of it as it was going on, but I did hear about it. Uh, apparently, not Arfang, but some boys of Arfang uh, took some sacrifices for their lad and um, might have consumed some things that might be delicacies in other countries, but not so much in North America. Um yeah, so it, it, the the this is what I was talking about before. The voting process can somewhat devolve sometimes into a carnival sideshow. Chudat in the past has eaten onions, drank onion smoothies. Raw. Samsora, uh, yeah, raw. Samsora took a bite into an egg, an uncooked egg with the I shell and everything. I did see that. He did do that. And it's Arfang's all funny until boys, someone dies. Apparently not Arfang himself, but Arfang's boys uh, had a cockroach. So that was. I think it was in a sandwich. Yeah. I think it was in was a it? sandwich. Was that it? I mean, I don't think it was live or whole. I think it was in a sandwich. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm seeing Roach Fang in the chat. That's that's funny. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, Samsara did bite into an egg. Samsara is also at thirty-seven thousand. So so a little bit of the standings here. Um, I'm gonna pull it up in a sec. Um, is it all for not? So in the past, people who actually do this sort of stuff sometimes don't even make it. Arfang, though, thankfully and maybe luckily, because it does get harder to get in as the poll continues, as people right. have more and more eyes, as people are more and more focused. Um, in this case, though, uh, Arfang made it. He made it with Leffen this this evening, or not this this afternoon. Yeah, the next closing is in 19 hours, 15 minutes. So 24 hours from now, about five hours back. So tomorrow at 3 p.m., I want to say, 3, 2 p.m. as the final one. Oh, I actually have 10 votes. Who should I give it for? Um, I'm going to give it to Sam. Hold on, I'm voting live. Um, but the thing about the voting is how you get them. I don't even know how I have them, but the way you get votes is actually by buying merch, all this other stuff. Tony can talk a little bit about it, but there's also a lot of like, it's kind of like an arms race. So people like kind of do these things called spirit bombs and they don't release their votes until the very last absolute moment, which then keeps everybody else like at bay. Huge mess, huge. I mean, it's a huge, it's a, it's a media blowout. Um, but right now here are the standings. So uh, we got a lot happening um, and for not very much, but for the most part, um, with Leffen out of the way, that pretty much opens it up for Armada to kind of chill out. Um, Armada's going to take any remaining melee hype. Um, but in this case, we have Sam Sorat's 37,000 voids. Uh, vo eh, votes, not voids. Uh, <laughs> 30,000 voids. Um, Armada at second with 30k. PGE Sam, 28k. Sandstorm, actually. Wow. Interesting to see him this high. 19,000. Ozone. Also 11,000. Glutoni, 8,000. I feel like something's going to happen there. Something has to happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no question. Prodigy at 7.2K. Riddles at 6.5K. Pour it out for your... Actually, doesn't even play the Belmonts anymore. I think he plays Joker only. Um, I, think if, I think if he... And I, I haven't been paying attention to his campaigning. I think if he pushed the Belmont thing, it... Like, I think it was unfortunate timing to be like, all right, I'm not playing Belmonts anymore. This is my tweak moment. I'm going to stop playing this bad character and move on. I, I think people would have really wanted a Belmont and Summit. I think. I could be wrong. But mm -hmm. I think the novelty of it would have, uh, you know. Yeah, and right now, it actually looks like a good mix. Mars is Mars. Nairo is Nairo. You have the two hypest, arguably, favorably, 
Empirically, honestly. Anytime Mars and Nara's on stream, no one's like silent on chat. Uh, light. Actually, that's like literally like Raikou, Entei, and um, Sui Kun. God, I haven't said that name in a while. Totally. So you've seen. Yeah. Uh, Mars, Nara, and Light are just extremely hype. Void, hype technical. T. Uh, chaotic, good, I want to say. Uh, Mides, Peaches are always fun. I mean, it's ridiculous. They grab you and then you're at 89. Um, Leffen, that's amazing just because it's Leffen. Arfang, also amazing because it's Arfang. And then Leo and Tweak. This actually looks immaculate. This could not be better handpicked, TBH. The, uh, the only person I need to see there now is Samsora. Samsora is legitimately... Yeah, I don't see him not being there. Funniest people I've ever... I've ever observed. Like, Samsara is legitimately hilarious. And if He's he a treat get to the in, community. It's going to be a crime. Uh, so I actually did the math just to let you guys know sort of what 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 the whole summit thing's all about, why everybody talks about it. So I tallied up all the votes. Now keep in mind, um, this is not including Arfang or Leffen votes unless you get them back. I don't think you do. I know that if somebody doesn't get in, you get half your votes back. They might have changed it. Yeah, I think they made it more... They made it less Ponzi, more equitable. <laughs> yeah, so keep it in mind that, it, you know, if people, voted for, if people voted for Elegant um, and they didn't get in, if you put 100 votes in for Elegant and then he didn't get in, you would get 50 votes back. So keep that in mind. Also, you can get bonus votes, 25 votes for every $50 spent. So you go to their site, buy a hoodie for 65 bucks, you're going to get however many plus uh, 25. Which the merch this now, time does slap. Gonna say. Merch is fine. Yeah, it's not amazing, but it's. I looked at everything. I was like, I really like this. I love the Pikmin hats. I'm that. I I like the trainer I, sweaters. Those are awesome too. Yeah, those are very good. Um, but so I just did all the all the math on all the votes, tallied them up, and then divide them by two, so you get two votes for every dollar. Where's seventy four k? And that's seventy four thousand dollars. Oh, here we go. So far in summit. So just. If you want to know why it's it's such a circus, this is this is big money. These are big fan bases. There's a lot happening here. And so. what's what's crazy is that's not even big compared to other summits. I don't right. even know if this is archived yeah. anywhere. So the other piece, um, listeners of ours, the other piece of summit that also, and this will be, or part the main topic is the summit update. So you got the okay, in order. Also, by the way, um, eliminated players. Uh, he. With the W, I don't even know how to say this. H E E E W, uh, elegant Spargo, Wisdom, MVD, Mysterica, MVD, actually, I emoji. Um, laid. I'm surprised from that MVD didn't see his thunder. Thunder, bro, get your boy. You got uh, all the money in the world. What the heck? I emoji. Um, Pape, it's your boy. It's your child. Uh, Spargo, that's that's a tier. Uh, Xenos, Wisdom. Oh my God, Greg from New England. That's a Samus player. What is he doing here? Uh, but anti and da, 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 yeah, and wishes, which I don't even I don't even want to get into wishes last week. But um, players that notably were like, "I'm in, but I'm not gonna campaign, bro." It's like, yeah, you you're not you you didn't, and you're not in. So um, summit is not the thing that's like, okay, the community is the community is gonna validate me because they're gonna see my skill for what it is. It's it's no, it is in some aspects, eating roaches. Um, but that's one piece, so those are the limited players. Second piece, who's in. Um, but the other thing, too, is like what Summit means when it comes to this really crazy engine where people, and we do, and everybody, right, smash, money, at odd ends. We're smash up in the game. It's literally like smash and money is like, it's like a 110 matchup, right? Mm. One nine, sorry. Um, and something that New England actually, I think this is clipboards, if I'm not mistaken, New England TO. Um, some regions have actually like actively protested slash shunned the idea of Summit, saying instead, if we take this money that we're about to like crowdfund, that we motivated each other to raise, mm -hmm. and put it into our community, then we'll have better dividends in the in the end we'll have more setups at our locals we'll have a bigger screen for our monthly we'll have casters and volunteers that get paid for like xyz event and it is interesting because there's always that one person at the end of every summit or even during the summit that mentions but this money can be going towards whatever but then the actuality happened. yeah but the actuality is 
people give money to perceivable value in whatever it is that they're putting into. And for this, Summit is that big thing. And I don't think that it is morally i mean even like spend the money you have that's not I, we can't even put judgment on that but i don't think it's necessarily a slight against the community to support a summit it's like people are gonna pay for what they want and like yes there are people that come out of the woodwork and drop 1000 votes on xyz player or xyz community leader or xyz local town hero and that speaks more to like the fact that people care about those things and when you put a event in the middle of I don't want to take shots, but if you put an event in a region that is not well traveled to and you get upset because people don't attend it because of whatever reason and you think they should have and whatever, like you, these events that all got to where they are today did not get to that point by complaining about people not coming. They put out something crazy, a water park tournament. They put out something new and not done before, a convention event. And they slowly built up that brand. And I don't think that not supporting Summit is the move. And I also don't think that like this money would be there anyways for something else. Like people are gonna like raise for what they care for. And honestly, like there's so many things in the community to care about. This is just one of those things where everybody can fit under one umbrella and people understand my money is going towards this event, which has been in the past proven to be very amazing, very cool. You've also got a problem. I've noticed a lot of people kind of hit the sour grapes. Like, I've seen people really campaigning, really trying it when they realize that it's not going to happen. They're like, oh, screw a summit. I hate summit anyway. We seven stages of summit. summit. Yeah, like, and, and I'm not saying, uh, just to be clear, Clipboards is not that guy. Clipboards no, 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 no. a smart no, no. dude. He said um, it even before the voting started. He said, we are not coordinating for new england in fact we are coordinating for ourselves that so respect to that honestly yeah not yeah i'm not trying to throw him out there but i have seen a couple people <laughs> saying well some it's whack anyway uh, and and if you had that opinion the whole time i get it but i i sometimes see some kind of like you're just mad because you're not going um yeah I, I i think summit is excellent for what it is i think it's a spectacle it's a I guess it's sort of a, a media circus, which I think is awesome. I think we need more stuff like that because mm -hmm. it creates it it creates moments that couldn't happen at any other event by creating this hyper focused um, sort of uh, ecosystem of just top players and personalities and people who know what they're doing in terms of content, not just like recording on an iPhone. These are people who are very it's talented. production. It is writing. Production it is, is shooting. It is everything. <laughs> doing all this stuff, having it all in one place over a longer period of time than just the two-day weekend is a huge boon to our scene. Um, Summit realized how uh, how good that could be for a community. And then not only that, but they execute it well. Because it's one thing to have a good idea about that. But they've done it in so many different games and it, it appears to be sustainable and it's scalable. So you've got something that's... Uh, a CSGO summit or a Dota summit or a uh, Mortal Kombat summit or a Smash summit, you can put it in different games and as long as you, as you have the right people behind it, you can make all of them a success. So varying levels obviously. Like Melee has been absolutely huge. Ultimate's been great. It's been fine. But they know which ones are going to sort of be bigger than others. But the sheer fact that it's something that you can Smash it's, it's, it's very hard to do things in Smash that are not endemic to Smash. Um, yeah, it's very hard to get a top eight MC up on stage to do Smash that doesn't know what he's talking about because the community just usually. Oh my gosh! Bad. Yeah, it gets really bad. The only time I hadn't seen it done was Golden Boy, and that's because Golden Boy is Baxi's baby. Phenomenal. Yeah, Golden he's, Boy. He's yeah, he is a like he's phenomenal. He's like yeah, he's wow, he's industry, so, he's industry. Yeah, so I think that that's what happens is they came in. They did the Melee Summit, did an excellent job, provided so much value to the community, and now people want to support this. Um, and and I think anybody that doesn't really see it like that, I, I mean, you can't get mad at how people are throwing their money. Like, you can't. That's that's America, dude. What do you want me to tell you? It's, it's, it's... I can see why people didn't like it. I can see why people might think it's a little silly, and obviously I think sometimes the money could be better suited toward directly supporting the community but you need a little bit of i don't know you gotta you gotta have some candy you know i i think summit's great for that 
it's a net positive by and large yes. also shout out to summit of power the dbfz uh summit that mm. they did wow what an event the other part too and this hasn't even happened yet because we're just talking about the votes uh they're gonna release and this is for everybody they're gonna release the talent slide for who's gonna be at summit in terms of the mic Oh boy, Um, that's always going to be an issue regardless of anything else going on. That's also really a separate issue from Summit because for as much as people want to hate on the event, then there's also people who like hate on the choices, they start scrutinizing everything, but that's just really feedback. It's just not, it's it's, it's just not, (laughs) it's not presented well, but um, something about like when you see these events, something to, to, to keep in mind as a community member as well is understanding that for something like this if you feel like you're owed or you should be at the event too like you're at that space let me just say if you had to ask to be in summit you probably you should not you should not have done that um reason i say this is like it's kind of like one of those things where the people running it understand the landscape of the scene well enough where like people are tapped to be on the talent side and it's not even like political it's not even that it's just more so like how will this make the best show how will this be the most well-produced cutting edge smash ultimate content piece that the community has seen to date right because also if you think about where we started where we are there's people in and out but um the big thing to consider is the fact that like this is not a career move this is not like well, let me get on the couch at Summit. Like, it's just, it's what it is. And, like, that's something I'm just going to say now because I know as soon as that graphic comes up with however many people, that'll be something people talk about. So, well, there, there's two things on that. So, the first is that you're right. It's not like, obviously, the exposure is phenomenal, but it's not a career move. And you turning it into a bigger deal than it is, putting it up on that pedestal, it shows, is, is, it, it's going to turn off, I think, a lot of people involved because they're, they're trying to put on something great for the community, but they realize it's it's a week of just hanging out and putting these skits together and do and by trying to turn it into this sort of Evo production, you're ascribing a level of like pomp and circumstance to it that makes sure that it's going to be like you're already killing the vibe, you know, like it, the the whole thing is supposed to be more laid back and chill. Yeah, it's um, like it's like someone with someone who has some sort of, you know, uh, notoriety being like after everything being like, "Hey, can I take a picture?" It's like, "Oh, man, like, yeah, just chill." We we're we're, chill, we're in my other, living room, bro. Yeah. And then the other problem is uh sort of the thing that you were touching on earlier is you can't get mad at them for having a vision. So, their goal is to put on the best product possible, and sometimes that is toward a the best way to do that is to work toward a larger goal um, in terms of who you're trying to attract. So for the last summit, they really wanted to bring in Melee people. Totally makes sense. Um, Melee had insane viewership, was a great summit event year after year. So what do they do? They want to bring in Chillin. They want to bring in um, and it made Armada, sense. Leffen. They want to invite all these people because they want to make sure that they're getting the Melee people and, and showing them a good time because they know those guys are proven. They've consistently had great summits. I want to bring those guys in and put them with the ultimate people who a lot of people had serious reservations about if they could carry a whole summit on their own. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's an important thing to remember is that that summit had to sort of be a smooth transition. If you rocked with just ultimate, it's an un... Could have been a train wreck. Yeah, you don't know. And, and, and the summit guys are very... I, I don't think it's disrespectful say they're clearly melee slanted so if they come into this raw with ultimate whoops <laughs> if they come into this raw with ultimate as a hit a water bottle <laughs> they might not make the best decisions invite the best people and that's through no fault of their own they're trying to do something for the community so i think when you look at the lineup try to keep in mind whatever vision they have uh going forward um and i think that I can't speak for all commentators, but I can tell you I don't take stuff personally if I do or don't get hired. And I I feel like the best don't either unless it – and that's the thing. I can't really say that because I know commentators who take things very personally. But I don't, 
and you shouldn't either. And don't get mad if your favorite person is not on the list because, again, the Summit people know what they're doing. They have a clear vision. If they're not involved, it's not because they suck or because they hate them or anything like that. It just wasn't the right time. And it maybe it's because I, I was an actor and I did theater, and it's like sometimes you're not good for the part. So yeah. You can be amazing, but you're not good for the part. You don't fit on the couch. That's it. Yeah, you're not going to be casted for Black, Black, uh, Black Hawk Down 2. Yeah. It's just, you know, there's a different role, different vision. And I think that's a good perspective. And the final piece we're going to end on before the live Q&A. So tag us with your questions as we finish. Um, it is like a production event first. It's not even really a tournament first. We do get to see very intense grinding and high level matches because of the structure of the event. But honestly, like there's also much bigger things. And what's cool is that this season we're piloting the counting of these invitationals. First season PGR, background we didn't. There's been backlash in the past, the rich getting richer, opportunity, conga, whatever. So we did not, um, but this season we piloted it and the invitational so far have been pretty cool, pretty nice. And also it's like, how are you not gonna count if Arfang beats like MK Leo? You know what I mean? Like that's yes. that's a, that's something, right? Well, it's gonna it's not gonna be an S tier, but it's still something. So excited to see how that turns out. I'm also um, excited to see what the lineup's gonna be for who's gonna be there, and you know for everything else. Like there's always more summits. So yep. keep your ears to the ground because you've heard it here first. People will be upset. Um, the worst thing you can do, by the way, um, this goes for everybody. I have seen this every. It just happened on Big House. If there is a graphic for casters and you at your boy, you at your girl saying, why isn't so-and-so here? That is a bra move. And I'll tell you why. One, this event, right? This, this, this legacy event like Big House, this media event like Beyond the Smash just compiled and put together this graphic with the grid, the pictures, the headshots. They were in multiple threads talking to multiple people to get their pictures taken, to get their headshots from whatever file, from whatever repository, etc. They worded the tweet. They scheduled the tweet. They made the hashtags. They made the overlay the way they needed to make it to match the theme of the event. And they also tweeted it. And for you to go and be like, why isn't Blink and Blink here? Not only does that put the event in this weird spot of like, we're not about to discuss our private dealings with a random on Twitter and why we decided. But also, whoever you tagged that's supposed to be there is now getting flagged as this like weird like now they're like, Well, I don't I don't really want to be a part of this. Like I understand they might have not picked me, but it's just like the the entitlement. I get being a fan. Maybe like you you react with like, oh, no, Coney, right? You'd be like, oh, no, Coney? Cool. But, like, tagging people, getting into, like, stop. Like, it's it's not even, yeah. like, it's just, it's a bad move. That it, happened to me a lot. So I wasn't invited to the first summit, and I was I was okay with it, because I get it. I get what they were doing, and I, I, I didn't take it personally, but so many people were like, where's Coney? At Coney? Coney? And I'm like, and people stop. are like, why weren't you picked? Why didn't you stop. get picked? What? And I'm like, guys, I can't, I can't tell you why I didn't. I can't yeah. make it guess, but, like, you're making it weird for both of us. I just, I just, I'm not Stop. going, and it's fine. Yes. Like, I, it was, and I get that people want to, want to support their people, especially in an age where it feels like it's, it's impossible to break into the upper crust. We see that time and time again where commentators feel like they're not getting their shine, um, despite putting in a lot of work. So I get it. You want to help them out, but. Summit's not the not the place. Evo, I don't really think is the place. If you're talking, um, like again, sort of endemic Smash stuff, things where Smashers in our community, like in the Ultimate side, are making all the decisions and are trying to make everything happen. I kind of get it, but like Summit's got its own thing going on. Evo has its own thing going on. The worst thing you can do, if you're a commentator, the worst thing you can do is is try to rally support it, <laughs> from nameless masses and be like oh guess i didn't get picked again like that's that's it's gonna make sure you don't get picked next year yeah yeah but the worst thing you could do as a fan is to make the it i guess it doesn't look well, bad because it doesn't really reflect reflect poorly on the commentator themselves as long as the event is professional which they should be if they're putting on something of this of this magnitude but it it's just it 
succinctly, it is a bra moment. It really l- is. L- listen, you're, no one's gonna get like Big House to be like, oh my god, you're right. We forgot. Oh my god, oh, yeah. that's so cow comment. Oh, it got stuck to the pages. Never mind. Let's redo the graphic. Like you're not gonna get them to redo the entire lineup. And you're also, if you're really truly a fan, like. Maybe hop in the DMs and be like, yo, bro, I'm sorry I didn't get this one. Maybe I can, like, review your VODs with you. That's more productive than adding Big House in the middle of, like, the week of when all these flights, when all these blocks, when everything has already been, like, situated. Like, come on, man. So, anyways, we're going to hop into the Q&A. That's the Summit update for this week. We have at least the next week and possibly the one after because Summit's later in the month. Yeah, at least two more Summit updates. We'll see what happens. Big House is this weekend. Hopefully Samsara earns it the honorable way. I'm joking. There's really no honorable way to get into Summit than just getting into Summit. Um, but tag us with your questions. We have one here actually coming in hot. This is potentially a spicy take. This is actually kind of a eye emoji take. So uh, Ed, oh, this is the famous has more vowels than it does letters. Um, Ed Guy says, Panda Global, do you think Cosmos will barely make PGR like 50 through 41? He definitely is in top 15 because he has too many bad losses and placements. Like 65th at even 129th at SmashCon. He did DQ though. Might be a little early to say. Don't sleep on Cosmos. We still got Big House. We know he's very good. Uh, he's a very talented player. He did take a pretty long break. I, what was it, a month? Um, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but... It, that is years in Smash time. Yeah, I was going to say, in a word, it, I literally was like, he's been gone for six months. But it hasn't. It was only a month, I think. Or, it, and I could be wrong. It might have been long less. But um, everybody knows Cosmos is amazing. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I... I've, already, I've, already, I've already said how I feel uh, about the character. So I don't want to belabor that point because I know that that a lot of people think I'm wrong, including Cosmos himself, so I don't want to be, like, a jerk. Um, I think Cosmos is a phenomenal player. Uh, I know he has it in him. Will he do it? I hope so. I would only say that Cosmos is definitely one of the most consistently minded players. I mean, he e sleeps, competes, so I wouldn't count him out at all. I also don't think those results are necessarily PGR ending, but at the same time, like, the PGR is the top of the cut, and right. we'll see how that turns out. So, I, I wouldn't sleep on Cosmos. Um, Let's keep well, in mind Light, too. Light had not quite that rough, but Light had a rough sort of... He, he's coming out of the valley. Um, yeah. And he's been popping Now he's in every top eight. Yeah, exactly. So and, and people forget about that. Like, if Cosmos, you know, starts... Oh, it's what's right now. So it's last week. It's shoot time. remember this. Yeah. You're only as good as your last place. Exactly. So... Um, we'll see for Cosmos. Another question, though, we'll keep it flying. Uh, this is by 3L Phi. Um, not to be confused with Z-Fly. Um, with, <laughs> with Leffen and most likely Armada and Summit, do you think that it might be like last Summit, where they heavily relied on Melee instead of focusing on what we have on the ultimate side of things? Uh, no. I think it'll be, if anything, like, three, four parts Ultimate, one part Melee. Um, I feel that, yeah. I think of Vish would be expected. I would not expect the chillin' and I would actually be surprised and I would DM Slime and be like, what the hell are you doing putting chillin' back? Um, no shots to chillin'. Actually, all shots to chillin'. Um, yeah, that was clearly like something to bridge and smooth over, but we don't need sure. that anymore. Um, we don't need that anymore being the bridging part. Like, this is now the main story. That was like the prologue, right? We're getting right. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting out of like Smash 4 going into ultimate some melee are kind of on the scene now it's like bro no one no one except for armada leffen and a little bit of plup actually play ultimate semi-seriously leffen being the most serious before i get clipped um and chilling it's, it's they have no idea what's gonna happen like or what's I think, happening uh, i think ultimate's established enough there's always this weirdness where like from smash 4 to ultimate you assume that it's gonna basically be the same but you don't know Maybe the game's going to be totally different. Maybe the top players will be different. Maybe the commentators will be different. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So they wanted to sort of um, hedge their bets. And by doing that, they invited a lot of melee people to fill up the slots. Now I think it's the dust is pretty settled in Ultimate. People know who the players are, who the commentators are. Um, I I, I think that it's, you know, obviously Leffen's in. How far is Armada in the... He's, he's second right now. Yeah, he might do it. 
That'd um, be cool. I think it'd be like, honestly, I think with Leffen and Armand, it'd be like the two uncles at the family party. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. They're, <laughs> and then they're... everybody else riding around like with squirt guns. Yeah. It's a little Water balloons. But... Yeah, so, so we'll see. I would not say, though, 3L5 that this summit will be anything like the last in terms of quote unquote heavily relying on melee. I think even the first one didn't necessarily heavily rely on melee. I think yeah. it was just like who was the authority on really anything ultimate wise back when it happened like yes there were plenty of smash 4 legacy peeps but honestly like if we look now there's plenty of smash 4 legacy players and people that aren't so hot you know or as involved and I people, think people yeah i i think people thought summit was trying to be that authoritative voice like this is what ultimate's going to be they weren't they would just knew they did what they knew yeah and what they knew was fine it was good Perfect. So, Asian Oink. Um, and by the way, I didn't preface this, but we do a live Q&A during the show. So if you haven't caught on, um, yeah. Asian Oink asks, Panda Global of Samsung is voted into Summit. Who do you see taking the Big House 9's qualifying spot? Funny you should ask because I have the attendees list right here. And out of Tweak, Mars, Samsora, Shuto, Nairo, Void, Light, Cosmos, Zachary, Wishes, Salem, Wadi, Nakat, Mutes, Puppe, Dark Wizzy, Ryuga, Mr. E, Goblin, Scat, and Fatality, and a Suar is in there. I actually, this would be hype. I'd like to see Ryuga. Okay, he said who, who would, not who we would like. I'd like Ryuga, but I see actually Shutone. I didn't hear DeBuzz, right? DeBuzz is not registered for Big House? I didn't hear him. I could be wrong. I don't see him in the list. Is DeBuzz mm -hmm. not registered for Big Chat? Chat right now. The buzz is not registered for Big House. This kind is kind of interesting because the buzz dropped out of the thing. I think that's a story in and of itself. I feel bad. Um, I don't know if this is cry for help or anything, but the buzz, we the love buzz you. Registered. He's on page twenty-two. Okay, so the buzz is there. Um, it's 22. an interesting thing because if you look at all the people that are already going, so many top ten names. There are a few sort of holes in it. Obviously, shoe tone, the buzz, some others who sort of could plug that up. Um, but I, I think it's impossible to call, dude. Like, there's so many good players going. I want Ryuga, but I see the buzz. You think and so? I th and I think the Would buzz. You would... go from Shutan? <sighs> That's it's gonna hard. be hard. Shutan's not gonna hard. let the buzz get in. It'd be cool to see Shutan. We actually don't have any Japanese on the entirety of it. Oh no, we have T. We have T. Sorry. I would really like to see the buzz because the buzz is very. Why funny. not both? He's very well. I, I mean that'd be great too. I, that would actually maybe get be first and second. Why not? High key, the perfect ending. The buzz and shoot tone getting in. I would like Ryuga. Uh, I would like everybody else is kind of whatever. Um, whatever to me. Okay, not whatever it's people. But let's say shoot tone to buzz. They'll take it. Um, next question. So we're tying up nicely on an hour here. Uh, Asks about the summit. <laughs> A Supernova369, here's your boy. Are we gonna have another ZD situation at Summit this time, bro? That's so oh. rude. Oh. For anyone well. who doesn't know, ZD came to Summit and uh, did as much as I did in bracket, which was not take a set from anybody. Not take a game. Oh. Zero 13. I didn't take a game either. Actually, I did take a game or two off Mewtwo King on the warm up set. Um, uh, he, uh, I. I... Shout out to ZD. This is not. It ha it's got to be someone, right? It's. No, it doesn't. Oh. It doesn't have to be anyone going 0 13. Okay, you know. Games. Hey, listen. Um, what ZD actually had a very good run at a uh, glitch seven. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think he made top eight. Dude, no he... games. Not a game. No. Game. Not even like sudden death or like. No games. Bro. I don't think. May am I making that up? Is I'm that sorry. the ZD I'm situation? Sorry if I'm spreading this info. I'm pretty sure it was 0 13. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking at the list right now. I don't know who's gonna go zero thirteen. Obviously, the obvious answer, I think, because it's just constant top ten players. It's gonna be Leo. Then Arfang. Like Arfang isn't bad at all. Don't sleep I, on Arfang. Well, that's what I'm getting to. I think a lot of people are gonna say Arfang is the meme pick. But one, he's not bad, obviously, by his placements. And two, he's Pichu. He's gonna take a game. Like Pichu's gonna do that to you. You're gonna get. You're going to get carried off the stage and down aired or thundered at, at 50. He's going to win a game. I think he's a lot easier to do that with than somebody like Fox. 
if I'm being honest. So, um, yeah, I, I, and again, no shouts to Arf. I hate that I have to keep doing this. Arfang is good. Uh, but I Outrage see, society, they, bro. He, I could see people thinking he's the 013 guy. He is not the 013 guy. If we do get a 013 guy, I think. It hmm. might be Mutes, if I'm real. Not to be mean. It hmm. might be Mutes. Actually, it might be, but they, they'd be close, though. They'd be yeah. mad close to game. It's okay, so if it's not games, it sets. Like, someone is always susceptible right. or, or risking not taking a set. It's it's not guaranteed, bro. I mean, just for going to Summit, you get money. So it's not the worst thing to place 13th and get money. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep tabs on that. We'll, we'll see who gets voted in. But uh, here's a question I saw, and if you found one, you can take next. But last three questions, third to last, by AXG. A X G W D. Wow, you just like really slapped the capture on that, didn't you? Uh, Panda Global with SEC and Summit having positive acclaim. Do you think more tournaments will strive to be more like an experience? Um, wanting and doing, Mr. Capture are two very different things. And I would love if we had a similar SmashCon experience, but also I I can only really do that once a year. Um, yeah. You, we, we, it's funny because Smash is always that thing where it's like everyone's trying to do the next big thing, everyone's trying to do the big, big thing, and then when someone does it, then everyone tries to copy the next big thing, everyone tries to copy the next big thing, and that's mm -hmm. uh, saturation. So, I would not like another Smash Con, and if it were happening, it had to be directly six months after the first, and it would have to not be in the United States, maybe like maybe it's somewhere else, but then attendance is going to be gutted, and then in terms of summits. Like, no one can coordinate something like that, um, like Beyond the Smash does. It's a very crazy, hyper-specialized set of skills. Yeah, you can get some PGA Golf Tour production bros to do it, and it would be something. Kind of like how ESA was run um, back when I worked with them in Vegas. Like, they had, like, people who did the Super Bowl. But they also, like, have a lot of trouble, and they're like, who's the buzz? Get the buzz on stage. We need to buzz. They don't know. Like, they're working a production. They know, they know what makes a good production. But Beyond the Summit knows what makes a good production, but they also have social capital. So they're not going to make a tweet that's going to be in bad taste. They're not going to be like, hey, gamers. No, <laughs> they're also not going to yeah. guilt us into going to their event and showing people carrying CRTs like uh, something else that rhymes with uh, anyways, three letters. Um, they're, they're, they're fine. So I would like more experiences like this, but also too much of anything. We don't want that. Um, Cody, I don't know if you yeah, have anything I, to say or another question. No, I mean, like, I think SmashCon really hit the hit the thing in the middle where it's like, okay, we ha there are conventions all over the year. There are PAXs and there are meetups, stream hacks, whatever. And then there are Smash events. And SmashCon really fits, sort of joins those two things together as just being a Smash-focused convention. I could see SmashCon happening in what it usually happens in August, so what, March? Um... Or no, that would be February. But then you're running into Frostbite. I think what you're seeing is that every month, except December, really, is kind of claimed by an event. And I think uh, if you want something as big as SmashCon, you're probably already late, unless you Dude, that's have something really big. Years in uh, advance. Yeah, you need, you need money to be able to do that. Uh, I don't really want to see another SmashCon. Again, I want to see whatever the next cool idea is. I have no idea what it is. A tournament at a zoo. Uh, why not? I mean, <laughs> you could just just tournament at X place. Tournament um, at a bowling alley. Yeah. Somebody Actually, that's been bad. Yeah, but in any case, like, I don't think we should be looking towards will more tournaments be like Summit or SmashCon. I think we should be looking at which tournaments are succeeding and why and supporting those not making more of them because that's not needed because now it's like okay i would love that there's another smash con but if it's situated anywhere near the other one i have to choose the other one right well, i can't right, it's so right now genesis is january frostbite is february march april is pound um which is they, recent which is recent yeah that's recent so that that just came up but it has pedigree like that is uh, it has branding around it um May is, is pretty open. Obviously, June, July, August is just a cluster of Evo, Smash Con, um, Smash and Splash, all that. 
Uh, September is sort of open. October is always big house. And November and December is kind of the no man's land because you're getting into holidays and that's that can be tough. Not um, Japan! Not Japan. That's why Japan we have, have such, worry about that. such a problem with this off-season theory crafting because yeah. it's like, all right, boys, we're going to settle down for Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and everything else. And then Japan's like, oh, my boy, a Japan major. And it's like, all right, you know, we didn't even get the presents under the tree and here you are. But anyways, go on. And, well, then you have other stuff, other, obviously peppering, littering in there. You've got dream hacks, you have CEO. Which also has a huge presence, mm -hmm. um, but that's in the like June, July, August period. Um, Dream hacks, two GGs. Uh, you've just got all these um, relatively smaller events, and when I say smaller, I don't mean that as like coming at the events, but like A and B tiers. They're big, but they're not the the multinational sort of international experience that everybody expects. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that those months are very quickly getting filled up, and I agree. I would rather see events sort of be um those things kind of crystallize and calcify around those events rather than creating all these new ones popping up all over the place because that's how you get to what happened in smash 4 where it's like <laughs> good god it's a nightmare yeah be careful what you wish for and i think that'll be a good spot to stop because all these other questions are just bumming me out um yeah. but ee's in the chat shout out for saying SmashCon is moving to washington state why are you mm -hmm. such a disappointment no, I'm joking. He, he was just saying. I don't think he's he, he's right. trolling. Um, we're allowed to troll too. But in any case, um, I think that'll do. It. I think I think we're in a good spot. Thank you everybody for joining the summit update. First one, first real one is now here. Shout outs to South Carolina. Shout outs to Peabnut. Shout outs to Arfang. Shout outs to uh, Roaches. Um, no shout outs to Raid. Um, they're very anti-roach. We're a pro-roach chat here. Um, but in any case, we got Big House 9 this weekend. Uh, I'll close out after Coney gives his little two cents. Um, anything you want to tell us, Coney, before we round out the show? Nope. Oh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I'll catch you guys soon. Um, I'm going to Big House this weekend. Big obviously. House? And then I'll be at Thunder Smash, obviously, next weekend. So October Ooh, that's back to back. October is looking very busy. Um, it's gonna be tough but yeah so check out big house this weekend if you're a member of my stream sorry i'm not gonna stream for a while because i gotta be gone Thoy's day and uh sunday Thoy's so, day yep so thank you guys for watching i'm gonna go get some food with my wife because she's been sleeping because she's mad pregnant and starving so, <laughs> i'll see you guys in the next one have a great night and goodbye thank you connie shout outs to uh pregnancy um anyways coney will be a dad soon but we'll celebrate that when it happens um for everybody else big house nine yeah wow it snuck up on me this weekend in detroit michigan we're gonna see the best of the best all the people i named earlier about potentially taking the summer spot and apparently to buzz on page 22 of the attendees list for some reason he's not algorithmically included with the people who are listed there as pgr so that's strange smash gg what gives but in any case, um, Q&A, thank you for doing such a good job. If we didn't get to your question, don't take it personally. We don't answer a lot. Um, but you can find this cut on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube by tomorrow morning. Assuming Burgers um, is amazing like he always is. And if you have anything else, any feedback, let us know. I think we're at a good spot with the show. I'll be real. We kind of started with the Smash Sports or the Sports Center vibe. Um... Honestly, I don't think I don't think we had to really do that. I think like the podcast is where it needs to be. Um, we had Beach, um, the other episode, kind of read like the recap. I think there's value in that, but honestly, I think there's a lot more to be gained in these conversations and later um, roundtables when we bring on guests. We actually haven't had a guest. Well, let me know in the chat right now because I'm gonna read it after I post up. Um, who you'd like to see on the show? Maybe for episode 40. Why not? Let's do it. Let's get a guest. I know a lot of them will probably likely be at Big House, but anybody you want to see in the show, anybody at all, a player, a caster, a TO, um, whoever that guy was that ate a roach for our thing, let us know. They don't even have to be notable. We're not, we're not gatekeeping here. It could be someone that we don't even know that could be on the show. Probably not. We have to know them a little bit. Um, but yeah, let us know in the chat. Who would you like to see on the show? Maybe for episode 40, we can organize something nice. If not, then definitely episode 45 or 50, since those are multiples of five. 
Uh, but any other case, thank you so much. PG Stats, Smash Center, Soir, Panda Global. It's been fun. Tell someone you love them. We're going to cut out and um, we're going to go ahead and uh, host somebody else. But for now, um, stay tuned. PGR season, it's the second one. It's forming up. End dates have not been announced. We are in talks with many different TOs, many different people who do not talk to each other, trying to get when they're going to stop hosting events so we can stop the season. Um, welcome to Smash Esports. Uh, but in any case, there is going to be, at least for December in North America, the final, final SSA tier. It's still an A tier right now, maybe it's already in an S, who knows. But Congo Saga by 2GG, uh, looking to be the final punctuation point for this season. Looking to be, I don't know, looking to be. We'll see what everybody else says. In any case, let us know. Been lovely. See you next time. And, uh, yeah, have a good night. Just chill out, alright? See ya.